Now let's talk about maps, but before doing so, let's correct our measure here in the master item. So in the accidents measure, we have the value divided by 1000. So I, I can click here, add it. And we can either add here that this value is measured is in thousands so that the end user will know, or we can go back here in the expression and remove this 1000 division, okay? Now let me click save. And let's remove some of these objects to make room for the map. Let's bring the map here from the list. And in this data set, you see that this is very interesting. We can use the coordinates from here. Um, in this case, we need to pick only one, okay? Because here we have the start latitude and start longitude and end latitude and end longitude. But they are very, very similar, right? And we also have the state and the city, okay? So we can use these columns to create maps. Let's start with the area layer using the state column. So as we saw, we have the settings here. We can put it the pale color, like the pale background, we have some other options to customize it, but let's go to what matters the most in here, which are the layers. So we can add a layer first using the area layer. And the column that we're gonna use is the state. Okay, so clicking here, let's add the state. And the click will search on OpenStreetMap for anything that matches, and it will probably bring the first reference. Okay, so we need to narrow down the search using this location option. So let's click here and we have the location field, but we need to narrow down the location scope. So click here on this button and here in country, we'll add US in single quotes, okay? Like this. Let me squeeze these other objects to make room for this chart. And now it's better to visualize. So we now have the state layer and we can customize this using the master item that we already have here, coloring the shapes by measure. So let me click here. Let's select our master item and we can change the colors in here, okay? Let's change the outline color as well, putting black. Now I'll go back to add another layer. So I'll click here and now let's add a point layer, which is the second option that we have and our point will be the ID. So since each ID represents an accident, each one of them has a different coordinate. So we can click here, let's add the ID because it's like a, a unique record. If the same ID had two coordinates, two different coordinates, like two latitudes and two longitudes, we would not be able to use this option, okay? We would have to change something or use the average from the coordinates, something like that. So now that we have the ID, we come here in the location field and we'll select this option, latitude and longitude fields. Now here we'll add the start latitude and the start longitude. Now each one of these points represents an accident or an ID. That's why they need to be unique. Here in size and shape, we can also change this so in this case, we can't really use the measure because we would be counting the number of IDs. But in this case, each point is an ID. So they will have the same size anyways. But we can resize this like this. We can change the shape to a triangle, square, or these other options. Change the color. like this, the outline color as well. And as we saw earlier, these points, they are not all the points that we have. So we need to come here in the options, general. And by default, we have this option set in 4,000 objects. Okay, so we need to change this. This will really depend on how many points you have. I will put here 30,000 points and we can change the other options here as well, showing the label, 
displaying this layer when some condition is true. In this case, we can add a condition to only show this layer when we have 30,000 points or less to assure that we'll be looking at all possible points in the selection. We can change the tooltip. Now let's click here in Done Editing and explore some of these locations. So I will click here in Florida and now in Orlando. We can either zoom in here or remove this layer in the settings. So let me come back in the state layer. I will remove this for now. We can also set a condition. Okay, so when we select the state, this layer will disappear, but we'll see more about that later. So click in here. Let's not show this layer right now. And to make it more interesting, I will come back and in the map settings, let's see the satellite image. Now I want to visualize only the accidents from March 21 by clicking here and we can zoom in in any one of them, any, any of these points and we will see where they occurred. So here we have two points, here we have one point. I'm hovering the mouse on these points, okay? So here, here, here. So I will reset the zoom. Now instead of March, let's see April 21. And we can play with that, okay? There's another column very interesting here in this data set, which is severity. So the higher the severity, the more severe it was. We can add this column to color these points according to the severity. So let's come back here in the master item and we can add the colors according to the severity. So I will click here and show assets to see again our options. So let's come back to the master item and add in our dimension list. I will click here in create new. Let's search for severity. Click in here. Now, if I click create, this master item will appear here in our list, okay? And as you can see, we don't have the option to add colors here on the top, okay? But once I click Create, I can close this. I can come back in the master item. And when I edit it, I can give colors to the values. So we have one, two, three, and four. One would be light. So I can put like a green. Two would be yellow. Three would be orange. and four would be red, like this. Now I can click save, and we can come back here in our point layer, here our ID, and in colors, let's add here the color by dimension. So instead of selecting the ID dimension, we'll put our severity column, which is right here. Click here, and we'll mark this library color option. From here, we can already identify that we have an accident here, severity number four, and in this selection, we only have accidents marked as two and four. Now let's come back here in this bar chart. Instead of having the bars with the state detail, let's remove this option here. Let's delete this and add the severity, which is also in our master item. So click in here. Now let's go here in appearance, colors, and instead of state, let's color it by severity. Now I'll click done editing. And we can see that most accidents are marked as number two. Some of them here in the beginning are more light, like more number one. So let me click here. We can see them on the map and we can analyze the main points of accidents. Now let's go back and add another layer, which is the heat map. And remember that right now we can only see 30,000 points here on the map. That's why we have this message down here. So currently showing a limited data set. And we have more or less 50,000 in here, as we can see on the, this bar chart. If we go back to the settings and add 
like 60,000, we can do so. So let's, just to show you how it works. So going back here in the ID layer, options, general, instead of 30,000, let's add 60,000. Now considering this selection, so Florida, Orlando, we are looking at all accidents that we have in this current data set. Now let's learn about the heat map layer. I will hide this one. So clicking here, let's not show this layer right now. And going back, I will add a new one. For now, let's skip line layer and let's add the density layer. Clicking here, this is very similar to the point layer. So here we'll add the ID and in location, we'll also add latitude and longitude. So start latitude, start longitude. We can change the weight and radius of these points. So if I change here, for example, to 70, this is much more wide, right? So if I make it narrow, it's better to visualize depending on what we want. And we can also weight this by some measure. In this case, we also have to change in the options here, the max visible object. So as we know, we have almost 60,000. So I will add here 60,000. We can change the colors in this heat map, the range as well, the opacity. Now it's more transparent. But let's go back here and analyze what we have. So it's now very clear where we have hot zones with more accidents. So these two areas, they are probably very dangerous because we have many accidents in here. The concentration is very high. And to better understand, let me go back here and bring back the point layer. Click in here, layer display. Let's show the point layer again. And notice that we have the points on top of the density layer. That's because the hierarchy here, we have first the point layer and then density but we can change this as well. So if we move this up, now we have the opposite, okay? And now it makes more sense to change the opacity of this layer. And we can zoom in here and see that we have much more accidents in this area right here. Another thing we could do here on this map is to create a chart layer on the states. So let's go back one step hide these two layers. And now I will add here the chart layer, which is the fifth option. In the location, we'll add the state. Now on the slice, we can use a dimension. In our case, let's use the severity. And our measure will be the count of accidents. Now we have Orlando in Florida filtered, but let's go back one step, remove the selections. And just like we saw with the shape map, with the area layer, we need to go back to the location field here and change the scope. Here we'll add US in single quotes. And now we are able to see the pie charts on each one of these states. We can change the size as well, and we can resize it using the measure. This could also be a bar chart, but let's just click here in done editing and see what we can analyze from here. So it's very clear that this state here has much more severe accident than the others. And if we use the measure to resize this pie chart according to the number of accidents, we can see where we have more accidents and where they are more severe as well. So let's just go back one step. And here, let's put the size by the measure. Now it's clear that even though we have more severe accidents here, we have much less than California or other states.